Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, we're trying out a little bit of a different uh, camera angle here. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If, you, uh, if you're a fan of this, we might do this more often. Wow, need to clean up all this dust off my counter, off my desk. Who would have thought if you keep rocks and stuff on your desk, you get a lot of dust? Hmm, yeah, I wonder. <laughs> Anyways, today we're talking about five knives that feel way more expensive than they are. Look, I review a lot of budget knives. I've also reviewed some high-end stuff, but I review a lot of budget knives. And I love budget knives. I really, really do. But in a lot of cases, you can tell that a budget knife is budget, even if it's really good. This Civivi Riffle, this is an amazing knife. I love the Riffle, but it does feel like a budget knife. If someone handed me this and they be and they asked me, how much do you think this is? I would tell them, even if I had never seen the knife before, let's pretend like I haven't, <laughs> I would probably guess, yeah, this is somewhere around the $50 price point, right? Still an amazing knife. I love this knife. It's a good, uh, you know, 55 bucks is good value for these. Even though they're discontinued now, you can get them for cheap at certain places. Look it up. <laughs> uh, it does feel budget. Great knife. Definitely does feel budget. However, there are some knives that elevate their, their, their fit and finish, just the overall feeling that makes you, makes you question, like, wow, is this only such and such dollars? And so today we're going to be pointing out some of my favorites. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. We're going to be starting off with a knife that, in my opinion, looks Classy AF. This is the Artisan Sirius, designed by Ray Laconico. And you can tell right away that this is a Ray Laconico design, right? Right away. No question. It's got his lines. It's got his nice little groove there. But this is a sexy looking knife. I love the way this knife looks. Um, you can get these in different options, including some higher end options. But this particular version here comes in around the $60 price point. Great action, feels amazing. Thumb studs, as well as a flipper, uh, front flipper that you can do like that or like that. Really, really nice action. Love the way that the blade, Air RPM 9, by the way. Let's focus here. Love the way that's that spear point blade looks. Oh, we might find have found an issue with this perspective. Ah, there we go. The pivot collar is a nice, nice touch. <laughs> a knife touch. It's a nice touch. Really, really makes that uh, makes a pop. Looks really good. I love the milling on the G10. In my opinion, this G10 just looks fantastic. You have a titanium pocket clip. Overall, this knife feels like a high-end gentleman's carry. And it's not that expensive. Um, I really enjoy this knife a lot. Let the blade down a little bit. Very, very cool. If you're looking for a kind of a, a fancy um, gentleman's carry on a budget, this is a great option. And like I said, again, there are multiple different versions. Alrighty, the next one we're gonna talk about is a traditional knife. And you can get a lot of traditional knives for very affordable prices, but this one is just a cut above the rest. This is my Rough Rider Reserve Swell Center Whittler. And you could probably put any Rough Rider Reserve um, knife in this spot. Of the ones that I've handled, they've all been really, really good. The fin finish on these things is just amazing. And again, you're looking at the less than $60 price tag. Look at that. It's a gorgeous looking knife. Ignore all my fingerprints and smudges. Fantastic walk and talk. Ooh. Great fit and finish. Everything's nice and smooth. Everything contacts really, really well. Look at those big fat washers in there. Yeah. This knife is amazingly well made. Now, I haven't handled a whole lot of um, 
really high-end slip joints, you know, customs or things made by like Great Eastern Cutlery, but I have handled lots of case knives. Most case knives are expensive or more expensive than this, and yet this does feel a lot better. Don't get me wrong, I love case. I really, really do love my case knives, but these Rough Rider Reserves feel fantastic. D2 steel, wonderful, wonderful burlap micarta on this particular version. You can get these and they've got lots and lots of different materials. Um, the Rough Rider, uh, the, or the Swell, Center, the Swell Center Whittler is one of my very favorite traditional knife designs ever. I think it's amazing. Let's wipe that blade off, get those nasty ass fingerprints off of there. Yeah, just, it's a real looker. It's a stunning knife. And one of the things I love about this knife in particular is it's it's got a working man's vibe but it's also got that very classy, you know, you can carry this to your wedding type of look. In my opinion, at least. I just think it's gorgeous. Very, very cool knife. Alrighty, moving on. This is the least expensive knife on the list today. This is the Camillus Dominator II. And if I'm being honest, you could put a lot of Camillus knives in this spot. Um, I love Camillus. If you're if you're familiar with the channel, you know I think they're super underrated. But this knife here comes in at like seventeen dollars. That's I picked this up for sixteen ninety five at my local Walmart, and that's an incredible price in my opinion. This is a Daryl Ralph design, which. That's awesome, but the knife itself is made really, really well. Now, it is the cheapest feeling knife on this list, but it's also the, mo the most inexpensive, so I think that's okay. Look at the action on this guy. What? Are you kidding me? Perfect detent, amazing action. Those bearings are dialed. Yeah, the handles are plastic and the blade is 3CR steel. Not very stoked about that, but the rest of the knife is just put together very, very well. And for $17, sign me up, right? There are a lot worse. Heck, there are knives out there that cost 30, 40, $50 um, that don't feel as well put together as this knife here. It's very solid. You can tell a lot of care went into the design from Daryl Ralph, but there was also a lot of care put into the execution. They wanted this to be done well, and I think it absolutely was. This knife is a ridiculously good value, and a lot of Camillus knives are. A lot of them come in under $20, and they're just, they're just built stupidly, stupidly well. I'm serious, guys. Camillus is so underrated. If you have not given them a shot yet, you need to. You need to. Do yourself a favor, right? If you, if this is your first video of mine ever, you have never seen me in any other videos, um, hi, first of all. Second of all, go buy a Camillus. Go buy a Camillus. Find one that fits your, your, your fancy, suits your fancy, whatever. Buy it. You're welcome. You're welcome. And if you never, ever watch one of my videos again, at least you'll have bought a really cool Camillus knife and I'll still feel happy. So Camillus, and in this case, the Camillus Dominator 2. Um, yeah, absolutely, really, really phenomenal value. Alrighty, our next knife is a knife that's been around for a little bit, but I have just now got my hands on one. I've been loving it. This is the Kershaw Atmos. And you can get a bunch of different versions of this knife. They cost normally less than 35 bucks. And I've been really impressed with how good this knife feels. Um, 8CR steel, okay, not bad. Um, not great, but you know, not bad. Uh, this is a Sinkovich design. Pretty much a full hollow grind on the blade. This thing cuts really, really well. You guys probably won't see the review until June, but really good performer here. However, we're not really talking about performance right now. We're talking more about just the feel, the classiness. Yeah, the sharpening from the factory is kind of wonky, but 
This knife does feel very premium. They've got excellent jimping up here, pretty much perfect jimping. The sad finish on the blade is actually really nice. Uh, excuse, mine has marks from use. I really need to start like wiping <laughs> knives down, like cleaning up knives before I sit down to film a video. Cause I always, always sit down and they're just covered in gunk. I'm going to do a quick little, you know, wipe it on my hoodie, you know, spit and polish. But um, really nice looking satin finished blade. The scales though are really, really cool. We have this G10 insert, which is really nice. It is kind of that cheap looking G10, or at least some people think it looks cheap. I don't know, I think it works on this knife. Um, but the pivot is really interesting. I don't know why, but it just stands out to me as being kind of a, a premium feature. And I love the way that the G10 around this, the, this handle is kind of chamfered and milled away. It, it makes it look really, really nice, really premium. And I've been impressed with this knife. It absolutely does feel like a more expensive knife. The action is wonderful. Kershaw's um, manual actions are absolutely underrated in my opinion. They, they, they know how to dial a detent to perfection. But yeah, that is the Kershaw Atmos designed by Sinkovich. Fantastic, fantastic knife. Really does feel very premium. And this is a great gift knife, by the way. I think this would make it an excellent gift knife to a youngster, to a friend. This is a really cool knife. Very, very neat. All right, to finish off this list, we're pulling out one of my favorite knives of recent memory. And a knife that I think a lot of people would agree is just one of the best knives that has come out in the past few years the CJRB Pyrite. This knife, I mean, you can see my, my full review of this thing. It's an amazing knife. Um, as a design, it's very simple, but it's very clean. It's very elegant. It works. This is a really nice EDC size, really nice EDC profile. Button lock, which, yeah, everyone loves button locks these days, right? Um, but the knife itself also feels much, much more expensive than it actually costs. These are, you know, the base versions are about 55 bucks or actually even less, like 40 bucks. You can get these at like 49 or 50 bucks, 49.99. But the steel on these scales, they have treated it so, so nicely. These scales feel incredibly premium. So you have a knife that's made with, you know, not very premium materials, steel and then ARRPM9, which I love, but the, the, the steel is treated in such a way that it feels incredible. And I think I just butchered those senten the, the sentence I was trying to say, <laughs> but you guys get the idea, right? Um, it looks nice. It feels nice. The weight on this thing is pretty much perfect. It's not light lightweight that enough that it feels flimsy, but it's not super heavy, but it has a nice weight that feels like there's a lot of quality here. The ergonomics are perfect. The action is absolutely amazing. One of the best budget lock actions ever. Um, just a really, really good um, knife for the money. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you pick one up. Look at the brushing on that steel. I think that looks amazing. Uh, this particular version here, I should point out, was a um, limited run that CJRB did on their website. I doubt there's any left, but I'm glad that I hopped on this one because, you know, it's a pyrite, right? You know, it's a pyrite. I had to get the brassy looking one. Um, but yeah, just, just a wonderful, wonderful knife. Alrighty, that is going to be it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tried to keep it short, 15 minutes, eh, whatever, that's short for me, <laughs> with all my rambling and stuttering. Um, I wanna hear from you guys. What are some of your knives that feel way, way more expensive than they actually are? And do you agree with my picks? If you like this video, leave it a like, comment below. Again, tell me what you think about this new setup. We might do this in the future. Um, yeah, leave a like, comment below, and subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful day. I've been Gideon. 
Until next time, adios.